Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything NFL Gambling Picks for week number seven. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Play that jam. It's good stuff. Rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. All right, we are getting into the NFL gambling picks. I went three and two last week, profited $107.79. Chris went four and one last week, profited $226.95. My overall record is 14 and 19. I am down 6.78 units. Chris, 15 and 14, he is up 4.22 units. You can find all of that information, all of our prior bets, all of our bets for this week over at winningcureseverything.com. Just click on the gambling picks little spot (coughs) up in the the thing. We're both still about to die. If you watch the college football recap, we were in bad shape on Sunday. I apologize for it. And, oh, yeah, but it's all good. We we are still there. We're still in bad shape. The weather changes and everything else is uh, is just getting to us. But we playing injured. We are here for you. We got some picks. We got some things to do. Ben F. from New Mexico went eight and two in the gambling picks last week in his uh, gambling picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. You can enter for this week and win you some nice prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. They are the presenting sponsor of the show. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Make sure you go check out what they are doing down there. They got some wonderful stuff in the works. Always a good time when you go down there. Their sports books are some kind of fun. I will tell you that. Um, And, of course, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our social media stuff, uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. You can find us there. If you are watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Share the show out with your best friend, if you would, or friends, multiple. Even people you don't like. Anybody you don't like, you can just tell them, hey, this show sucks. You should listen to this. It's because you don't like your friend, those other people. I mean, not like, not like us, but or, or, or just share with everybody. Whether you like us or not, just share the show out one way or the other. And whether you like other people or not, just it's tell them. so hateful. That's, hey, I'm just saying, there's a lot of different re- reasons why you would share out a show. That's not much these guys suck at making picks. I don't know that I... You okay. don't suck right now. My You're name, doing my, fine. My, 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 I, don't, I don't think that way. That's a, that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm I'm in the negative in both college and the NFL. So, excuse me if I'm a little hostile. No, I'm not, I'm not worried. That's, that's, <laughs> I get it. okay, and I understand that. I'm a little hostile, but that's okay. I've, I've had uh, I've had some winning re- uh, winning weeks winning weeks here recently. I'm I'm starting to get the hang of this. I'm feeling okay. I feel pretty good this week too. Chris I, Jones would tell you to be a winner at life. Well, I'm not doing that either. Well, that's come on now. Gary. No, no, no. I'm getting there. You're I'm a winner there. at life. What are you I'm talking a, about? I'm going to be winning when we're in Chicago this week. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to be winning at some pizza and winning at just chill, actually getting to maybe sleep in just a, just a touch. Like, not a, not a bunch, just a little bit. Just no interruptions. Life will be good. I don't, I don't know if that's how it's going to work out. I hope, I hope four, nothing four goes Four guys crazy. in a hotel room. had not done that since I was in my 20s. <sighs> Too old for this shit. Yeah, that's the way it goes. All right, let's go ahead and fire into this thing. I got five picks. You got no, four? I'm being negative. I got four again. All right. Did I do four last? No, I did five. Either One way. Four. Either way. It is what it is. I'm going to start us off. Go ahead. Going to Green Bay. Raiders catching six and a half at Lambeau. Teams coming off of a bye against teams that have played on Monday night the week prior are 30, 15, and 1 against the spread since 1997. Like it. I think this Raiders team is not terrible. I, we were wrong about them being a laughing stock in the NFL this yeah, year. I, I think uh, I, my under 6.5, I don't feel real good about. Um, I yeah, don't know that, that they win this not. game, yeah. but the Packers had to fight and claw and pay off some referees to get that win over the Detroit Lions. Outside of the Cowboys, the Packers haven't kicked anybody. All their games have been close. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I like And, and I, I like think it. this is a spot where the Raiders can come in here and keep this thing close. 
one possession, down to the wire. Give me the Raiders plus six and a half here. Uh, I'm doing 50 bucks at minus 110 on this one. Who you got first? All of mine are going to be for 50. Okay. So I can tell you that so it's easy math. And I lied. I've got to find the fifth pick because i got to find the fifth pick in my super contest. <laughs> and I feel very weird giving out five picks. Have, have a, go on and give me your first one. Oh, first. yeah, obviously. Yeah. We'll start off. <clears throat> hot, hot team. Houston Texans. Yeah. Went into, when we get into breaking down the game, talking about last week, talking about this week, I've got some opinions. But Houston Texans playing really good football. Sean Watson, incredible. Man, so are the Colts. The Colts showed everybody how to beat this team. Yeah. They just took their playbook. Then the Colts had a week off. They're getting some guys back. I hope the Lord they're getting some guys back. It's Tuesday when we're making these picks. I'm assuming some of these DBs are coming back. They better because Sean Watson going to cut them up and be gone. I got to let a pick them. I see it as a pick them right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I think it's a pretty even pick match game. I'm going with the home team. Give me the Colts. Colts, 50 bucks at minus 110. All right, I can get down with that. Next up for me, game number two. I got the Minnesota Vikings going to Detroit. And the Lions have put so much into so many games here. They have really been working their rear end off. They have kept every game close. It, they, they've, hey, you changed two games, two, two plays in two games? Yes. They're sitting undefeated. Yeah. You, you change... Three plays in three games, and they're sitting at five and zero. Oh. Yeah, they're undefeated without the tie. Yeah, instead they're two two and one, as it stands. Correct. This ain't a bad football team, but the Vikings are on a different level right now. Uh, the Vikings, when they play in a dome, I, I don't know what it is. They are they are something else. I mean, they won at Detroit twenty seven to nine last year. Cousins should in apologize Detroit. more. I think so. Because ever since he said, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Baby, baby I didn't mean it. Please, baby, I didn't mean please it. Please don't leave. That's, this is exact. Him talking to Diggs is, is the way I have. I've had many a conversations with women after I've done stupid things or said stupid things. Baby, baby please. I'm sorry. I didn't I'm mean sorry. it. I won't do it again. He's going to do it again. He's going to yeah, throw the soul-crushing interception. Yeah. He'll do that. But that, hey, you know what? I don't know that he's going to do it this week. Okay. Uh, the wide receivers have been playing really, really well. The running game still... Still chugging right along, doing its thing. They blew out the Eagles. They are blowing teams out right now. Uh, the Lions have put a bunch into these first five games that they played. I like the Vikings to go in here and get it done. They're only one point favorite here. It was a pick 'em. It's moved to one. Uh, I'm aside with the Sharps here early. I am. Like, give me the Vikings minus one over the Lions for fifty bucks. I hope it time. wins because I've got a Vikings. Over pick, and I got a Vikings winning division pick, and I need these to happen. But I'm terrified to pick against this Lions team. Oh yeah, that I'm not kidding. They have had two complete screw jobs. Oh yeah, to keep them from being undefeated right now. That's oh I know. Just a, that's the brutal. At some point in time, you feel like the ball's gonna bounce their way, and so it scares me. It scares me off that game. I'm still looking for that fifth game. I ain't found it yet. <laughs> so another weird thing, you know how I like dogs. I always like dogs. Yeah. I got no dogs right now in my four picks. Go to Cincinnati. I'm taking the Jaguars. They just got rid of Jalen Ramsey. Is it the Jags at the Bengals? At Jags at the um, well. Yep, it is the Jags at the Bengals. And it went down a point. And the juice moved a little bit. What we no, got? It, didn't. it went from three and a half to uh, four to three and a half. Okay, so minus three and a half at but minus one fifteen. I got to pay a little higher price on the on the gas. That'll be all right. Um, just bring this card out so I don't get forget. Bengals are a bad team. Now they're not trying to tank. They're not trying to be bad. They're competing. They're trying to fight, but just everything just seems to go wrong in all these games for them. Yeah, they 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 can't get Joe Mixon going. They can't get the run game going. Andy Dalton looks pretty good. Receivers make a couple of plays every game, but it's just not enough for that defense is. Dying out there. Just dying. I think this Jaguars team is coming to their own. I think losing Jalen will benefit them. This is a he's been a distraction. He hadn't played the last couple of games anyway, but at least now we have resolution. 
We don't have this weird thing hanging over us that DB locker room can can get together and figure some things out. And uh, it's not a lot of points. I thought I went into this thinking if it's less than a touchdown, I'm taking the Jags. If it's less than a touchdown, I'm taking the Jags. Taking the Jags. All right, all right, I'm with you. I'm with you. I can understand it. Let me uh, let me jump into game number three for me. I'm going to Nashville. I told you, I'm not betting on the Titans anymore. That don't mean I can't bet against them. And that don't mean that I can't bet on totals. Okay. This is maybe the worst offensive line in the NFL right now. They, they make over $100 million. You realize that? Yeah, it's a high-paid offensive line. High-paid offensive line that can't get nothing figured out. I, I, I thought, a lot of people thought, when Taylor Lewan come like came back, well, chemistry will get readjusted. Everything will be fine. They'll be able to move the football. Now they've gone and benched Marcus Mariota, making him out like the scapegoat, like it's his problem. You realize they got sacked. Mariota got sacked seven times last week against the Broncos, who in all of the games prior had only sacked a quarterback five times. One, and all of those came in like the last two games. They had like the first three games with no sacks. That's what I'm saying. And then this team all of a sudden – I mean, the the Titans' offensive line is the cure for a bad defensive line. That's all it is. Uh, Chargers, not very good. Their offense can't do nothing. They turn the ball over. They can't figure out what they want to do. Titans' offense can't figure out what they want to do. And you're giving me a total of 40 points? These are too bad for both of us. I'm going $100 at minus 110 to go under 40 in this ball game, and I think that is easy money. I, yeah, I... I don't like to take totals. I'm not good at it, but yeah, I don't. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. No, not at all. Not all right. at all. All right, who you got next? Game number three for you. Taking a really good football team. And there's only one of those. And they're play- There are two of them. <laughs> there are two of them. <laughs> Gary's going to get hit tonight. God, he's going to turn his camera off. He's going to turn it back on. All right, all right. <laughs> it won't have much behind it, but it made me feel better. San Francisco 49ers flying all the way across the country. Yep. For a 1 o'clock game, noon, got time. Yep. Play the Washington Redskins. Washington Redskins are a dog football team. They barely, barely, barely beat a team that's trying to lose every game. Yeah. Trying to lose every game. And I think through the two-point conversion – if you ask my personal opinion, they were like, hey, call a call a screen pass where you throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage real far and don't put any blockers back there and just let him be one-on-one against, well, one-on-seven against all these other guys. Yeah. And it didn't work, and they lost. That's the only reason the Skins won this game. Now, I've got a home team catching 10 points. And usually you would say, well, see, you don't do that in the NFL. because all these guys go, Especially not for a West Coast team. Go eat. Coming east coast for a noon see, kick. See, they've come east, and they beat the hell out of the Bengals. Yep. And they've come east, and they beat the hell out of Tampa Bay. I don't think they're afraid of coming east. I don't think so anymore either. And I also think that um, you have to stop looking at when good teams play bad teams in the NFL. You have to stop looking at it like professional football. You have to start looking at it like college. I talked about this a couple weeks ago when the Patriots played the Redskins, and I said – Vegas is wrong, and they're wrong by, like, seven points wrong. Like, they're yeah. big wrong, not little wrong. Big wrong. And I was right. I think yeah. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to lay all ten of these points, and I think the 49ers are going to come in. I think they're going to whip their ass. 50 bucks minus 105? Yeah, I'm just 50 for all of it. I, I can't do math tonight. I understand. I understand. I'm giving, I'm giving the people the best I can. If it don't work out on the math sheet and I should have put more, that's fine. I know. That's all fine. If I lose all of them, then I didn't lose. <laughs> All right, next up for me, I am going to Chicago. This is still a Bears offense that cannot score. This is a crazy football game. I can't believe you're betting on this game. Oh, I'm, I'm 100% betting on this game. Oh, my what, gosh. What, what, what have we got? Saints are plus 105. It's crazy juice. Yeah. Plus 105. If you were going to take Chicago, you'd be laying not 115 like normal when the juice is 105. You land 125. 
How the hell does that? How do they get to say we're gonna make this much juice on you? All right, let me let me just say this: the Saints. Oh, it's not one. Oh, it's not. I'm sorry. Forget everything I just said, and you go back to your point because mine's all wrong, <laughs> and this is right. By the way, <laughs> who would have thought that the computer was right and I was wrong? Uh, you you keep talking. I'm done. Okay, so so everybody seems to think that the Saints at some point are going to fall off. Because Drew Brees is not there right now. Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy against, two gloves. Against the spread. It has the best record of any starting quarterback in the NFL, not just for this year, but for all time. All time winning percentage against the spread. Teddy Bridgewater is ridiculous. He's like twenty seven and nine against the spread as a starter. Did he have that many starts? Yeah, in Minnesota. In Minnesota, yeah. Disney. Oh, hundred percent. Was that team that good? They were covering that many lines. They covered a ton of lines. Yeah, I mean they made the they won the division. I remember that, but I don't remember covering them many lines. I, I, they were like twelve and four. They covered a lot of lines. Covered a lot. I would have not. Um, I would have not believed. But that but he, he wasn't just a starter for like one year. I know. Like that. he was, you know, he was there for a while. Uh, Teddy, my boy. It ain't Teddy that is covering these lines. It is that Saints defense. And they are going up against a bad, bad Bears offense. I understand that Chicago has had a bye week. I get that. That's fine. This Saints defense, I would not want to try and tangle with these dudes right now. And, and, and if I'm that Bears offense, I really don't want to tangle with them. Even at home. I don't care. Saints, I'm getting three points here at plus 105. Give me 50 bucks on the Saints here. I like this defense. I think they are going to continue to roll. They are continuing every week to feel slighted. And they just come out and keep winning. Just doing the thing. Teddy Bridgewater, give me that win, baby. Saints plus three at plus 105 for 50 bucks. I'm in. If the Super Contest would let me do over on this, I would I would take the under in this game, by the way. With and, a 38 in this one? <clears throat> yeah. And which how if, is this one less than the Titans and the Chargers? Explain that to me. This is going to be the dumbest game ever to, to be played on football. I'm... <laughs> We're good. We'll move on. I was like, you look like you want to say I something. Had, I had something, and it was there, and then it's, it's fine. It's okay. Like, this is just what happens when you're at this point in life. Game, uh, game number <clears throat> four for you. Hey, you remember that 49ers thing I said about good teams, bad teams, a lot of points? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And all good stuff. teams beat the crap out of bad yeah, teams. Yeah, bad teams. So, I know that the Jets look like a good team on Sunday. The, the, the stats would tell you otherwise. That's fine. That's fine. I know that you don't like analytics, but like. I don't I don't dislike analytics. But this is why you can't believe in all of analytics. Yeah. The Cowboys suck right now. The yeah. Cowboys just are all inside themselves and have no clue they don't have any identity. They don't have any heart. They're not playing with any pride. Like they, they have no discipline whatsoever. It's. Are we talking about the Cowboys? Or are we talking about the Cowboys? Okay. That's why the Jets look good. That's why the Jets put up stats. It's the only game the Jets have stats in. Well, but, the, but that's the thing that the stats would tell you that the Cowboys should have won the ball game. But Jets are a bad football team. Patriots still a really good football team. Yes. I think the Patriots are pissed off that the Jets scored the first touchdown against them. They're trying to go the whole month without it. They won a defensive touchdown, an offensive touchdown. They scored a defensive touchdown and a special teams touchdown. I don't think that the Jets score an offensive touchdown again. I know this game's at home. I know it's a Monday night. I know that New York is going to be rocking because they believe. And I know that Bill Belichick loves to go up there and just pull their pants down and spank their ass. Yeah. I'm laying 10 points in this game also. Patriots minus 10 at the Jets. What's the uh, what's the juice? It was 105. 50 of minus 105. All right. I'm in with it. Take a long time on this one because I got to figure out this next pick. And there's not a <laughs> single game I like. <laughs> game number five for me. You talked about going against bad teams. Now, I really don't like laying this many with this team. But I am taking the Buffalo Bills. Is that at home? 
It's at home. It is at home. I liked it. I like this pick. I'm a fan of this. I can't take all these. I can't take all these favorites. I the Buffalo Bills minus 17 at home against the Dolphins. Now the Dolphins were in the fight of their life in the tank for two a bowl last week. And this week they got to go on the road up into the cold of Buffalo. And Buffalo's coming off a bye week, if I'm not mistaken, right? Buffalo does have two weeks to prepare for this game. That is now, correct. I, I don't know why you would need two weeks to prepare for the Dolphins. but I think they just get some guys healthy. I don't think that Buffalo scores a lot here. But you don't have to score a lot to cover 17 if you don't give up a point. This defense is really good. This defense is absolutely lights out. Probably the second, third, maybe second or third best defense in the league. I, yeah, I think I think they're the third best defense in the league, and I don't think it's a slight. Somebody was like giving me crap about they're the second. Like, all right, you want to say they're? The I mean, second? It, look, it, it's uh, it, it's between the Patriots the and Bears. the Bills and the Bears, Bears and, and and the Forty ers front line is ridiculous. But they're not, but they're not but the in full the conversation defense in the with the full defense. The secondary struggles. Yeah, um, they're not shutting people out yet. I like these the, teams are shutting people out. Yes, I like the Bills. To cover against the Dolphins here, I, I think the Dolphins gave everything they had last week. 17 points. It's 17, and it's a lot, but I, I think they can get that done. You know you know what what I always say? When a good team in the NFL plays a bad team, we got to start looking at it like college. Yeah. And until they get these numbers in the 20s, which the NFL will never do, then the favorites are going to keep covering. Well, they did with, uh, with, like, the Patriots and with whoever else earlier, right? But it, they were still smoking them. Still wasn't enough. No, nah, still wasn't, wasn't enough. enough. $75 at minus 105 on the Bills at minus 17 at home against the Dolphins. Absolutely love it. Are you done? I am done. Oh. Who Have you found a fifth one? There's yeah. only 16 or yeah. 15 games. Yeah, no, there's not a lot of games. We've got a lot of teams on buys. Or no, it's only 14 games. And yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not touching the Rams-Falcons. You couldn't I pay me about- money to buy a ticket to the Rams-Falcons <laughs> game right now. Sam, Westlight Pirates guy, give me Denver. Three weeks in a row, Chiefs going to struggle. Yeah, Plus three. Lee. Let me tell you, if I was the Chiefs, and this is the only reason I'm making this play, this is the logic behind it. If I'm the Chiefs, I wait until is close that, to game time. Is that at Denver? It's at Denver. If Mahomes' ankle isn't right, short week, against a, a division rival that you know you don't like and they don't like you, I think I would bench Mahomes for one game and let him get healthy. Probably not a bad idea. It's not. You've already lost home field advantage throughout. There's a really good chance you're not catching the Patriots. Don't know that you can't still win the game anyway because Broncos have looked better, but not great. <clears throat> and Who is this backup? Need, I don't know the answer to that. Wow, I don't know that. But you, you. You need a healthy Mahomes. We've seen two weeks in a row you need a healthy Mahomes to, to be able to win these football games. And with him being stymied, with him being hindered with injury. Matt Moore. That's a blast from the past. Okay. I you, think I would I would just bench him. I don't care who the backup was really. I mean, you got to get him healthy. I, I would I would I think he him being healthy the rest of the season is more valuable. Now, they're not going to do that. They're not. He's going to play on short rest. Short rest. I got an injured quarterback. God, I'm betting money on Joe Flacco again. How stupid is this? Man, it happens sometimes. There's only 14 games, man. <laughs> I'm not touching a lot of these. I, well, I really, I'm going to tell you the other pick I was going to take, just in case y'all were curious of what I was struggling. I really want to bet there. I really want to bet Arizona. Yeah. Plus three gets the Giants. But I'm going to go. Not my pick. If they cover, I don't get credit for it. Uh, you got to <coughs> lean, though. You got to lean. Give me the Broncos. All right. We're, uh, we're going to bring in our buddy, Mr. TJ Reeves, from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, and he's going to help walk us through uh, a few things here and there. So here's TJ. All right. He is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, you're back from across the pond. You're back from the UK. You went over and you watched your boys get smacked around a little bit. 
<laughs> it, it, it's never a good, it, it's not a great trip if you go over and they're not even competitive. But I'm sure it was well, a fun trip nonetheless, right? It was a good trip until they kicked off at Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> Stadium, and then it kind of went downhill from there. And, yeah, the Panthers won and won decisively. See, I thought you were going to be a kind and loving Gary Seegers and, no. and have some sympathy for the fact that I went 4,500 miles from my home with my football team to watch them lose on another continent as opposed to losing on this continent. Um, but, but that's okay. But that any and, difference? I mean, yeah. think about it. You you got to go to L.A. and get a massive win. Early. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're, we're I, not, either we're way, not, we're not spilling too many tears for that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you did just fine. Look, every now and then you're going to catch one of these L's, uh, and you you told us before that the Bucks have gone over what three times and lost all three. Two previous two previous times. This is now three times going over there and looked bad in all three games. So London is not for us apparently. And, you know, you bring up the fact that Jameis Winston was so good in that game in L.A. He was the NFC Offensive Player of the Week and threw five touchdowns. That was good, Jameis. This was bad, Jameis, on, on Sunday. And you, you could just see as the game wore on the, the lack of confidence and assurity in where am I going with the ball, where, quick decisions, what am I doing against the blitz, uh, and it, it, it's just very difficult in the NFL to win like that. I mean, you, you compare it, and I realize Aaron Rodgers uh, is in a category up there with Brady and with Breeze as the elite of the elite right now. But you watch Rodgers in the Monday night game, makeshift kind of offensive line, nondescript receivers, guys you've never heard of. And the ball is accurate for the most part. He's calm against big pass rush and pressure. That's what you have to have a lot of time in the NFL. That's what separates. Uh, the good from the great, the average from the good is the ability to handle it when the fire's flying, when there's unblocked guys, when there's receivers that maybe didn't come back to the ball on one play or another play, you go make something happen. Uh, and that's what was frustrating to watch on Sunday, and hopefully the Bucks will take the bye week here and then bounce back. I do. I do so wonder. so I actually, I actually hey, think Jameis is a pretty competitive guy. He usually leads the league in interceptions, and he saw yep. Baker Mayfield just taking that flag and running with it. And he thought, hey, I got some ground to make up here. I got, hey, you're on my podium. You're on my lawn, Baker. What uh, what well, would you? I know your Browns. Your Browns keep inventing ways. They're even up big at home on the on the Seahawks, oh, and they're yeah. turning it over it's and, good, and making it's mistakes. Hard. And and really, for both of these franchises, there was a lot of expectation this year. I mean, they've they've got Cleveland on national television two or three different times. A lot of people were making them uh, as, a, as a possible playoff pick. And, of course, the Bucks hiring Bruce Arians uh, to be the guy to fix Jameis Winston. And, and it, we're six games into this. There's still opportunity uh, to win some games and to look better. But I understand where people have questions right now on, uh, on Bruce Arians trying to be able to stop this because this was supposed to stop where you don't have a game where you throw five picks like Jameis did in London. I, you can ask Gary, last year I beat the drum. There was one person I wanted interviewed for the Browns job. One, and that was Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, and Arians and Arians had even hinted that that was the job he would yeah, come out of retirement that's, for. That's right, and, and didn't get an interview. They didn't interview the man. Interesting. Just well, blows my mind. I would, uh, uh, if, if I were a Bucks fan, I would give anything for just a consistent Jameis. You know, that, that's well, the that's what, Yeah, obviously, that's. That's what you're looking for here. Maybe it'll be that way uh, off of bye week. Can we get off that subject, please? Yeah, I mean, I was I was over in the UK. You know, I was trying to have a nice meal at the pub. They're watching <laughs> rugby over there, and I'm trying to figure it all out. I was devoid of college football on Saturday, and then we go and do that on Sunday and fly all day, and I'm not able to watch any of the other games uh, when we come back. So I, I'm anxious to talk about some of the other games this week. we got to get to that. Well, one of the NFL games that you missed was the Texans getting a big-time win over the Kansas City Chiefs. They held wow. the ball for 40-some-odd minutes, uh, and yet they go in this week, and they are an underdog at Indianapolis. Now, this, uh, is the other team. this is the other team that, that also beat just the beat Chiefs. the Chiefs. Yeah. Um, tell, me, tell me, do you have a lean on this? Are you feeling I like way? I, I like the spot here for Houston, and I know – Look, you, you guys have been great at this because, Chris, you were all over the Colts and that Sunday night win over the Chiefs in advance on that. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that Houston here on the road, I, I keep thinking about Dabo Sweeney trying to tell everybody a couple of years ago, and I know Deshaun Watson tore his knee up uh, shortly after he, he burst on the scene last year, but 
or a couple years ago. Uh, but, I mean, Dabo Sweeney was trying to tell everybody, you pass on this guy, you're passing on Michael Jordan. Of course, he was buddies uh, and in and around Michael Jordan at, at one point. Uh, and he, he said, that's what you're doing here. You're, pa- you're passing on a great player. And Deshaun Watson is looking like that kind of quarterback. You were mentioning consistency, game in and game out, week in and week out. That's what Watson looks like, and I think that travels on the road. And let's see if Houston's found a little bit of a running game with Carlos Hyde. They've obviously got outstanding receivers. The matchup with that Indy defense uh, on the road, that's a, that's a game we'll definitely look strongly at on Three Dog Thursday, sirs. Now, let's move on to Sunday night, because I think that this is going to end up being a massive, massive game. Uh, Both teams coming off of a loss. We got the Eagles going to Dallas, Mm. and and this, I mean, this could be for the division. This is, and it's early. Yes, it's early, but... But this is a two-horse race in this division. Yes, and and these are the horses. Uh, You got any feelings on the Eagles? I mean, they're they're catching the three. I mean, you're right. This is a key game because these two teams realize that the Giants and the Redskins in particular are bad, if not awful. So those are guaranteed wins for both of them, uh, in particular because the Cowboys get the Redskins at home later in the year. And this is this is a division home game for Dallas. And, Chris, you've got the stat in front of you. Again, I was not able to see this game flying back from London. We didn't have the live TV to be able to see it. I was keeping up with it a little bit on the – on the internet, on the Wi-Fi, on the on the plane, but that Jets win, the winless Jets beating the Cowboys. What is the stat over the course of almost the last thirty years uh, of all of that? NFL teams are ninety and one since nineteen ninety one when they win the time of possession, total yards, mm-hmm. turnovers, <laughs> pick up twenty five first downs, and convert <laughs> at least ten third down attempts. Cowboys have the one. The teams had been 90 and 0 until last week with all of that happening. How do you convert 10 third downs, have 25 first downs, and win the turnover margin and don't win the game? And I don't. That's incredible. I just they weren't close. The end of the game, they had to get right. a ton of calls and a ton of things go their way just to make it look like it was competitive. When you see the final score, yeah. So go figure, go figure Dallas, though, back home. Ezekiel Elliott did have 100 yards in the game last week. And the Eagles, they gave up a lot of big pass plays to Cousins and, and Diggs uh, in this game uh, that, in Minnesota secondary. last week. That right? secondary in Philadelphia is bad. It's got problems. Yeah. Well, and so now the question becomes, can Dallas take advantage of that? I know Amari Cooper was hurt last week, right, in the, in the Jets game and basically – uh, didn't play at least the, the second half of the game. So can they take advantage of it? We'll see. We'll talk a lot about the Eagles and the Cowboys on that one. By the way, tip of the hat to Gary Seegers. You were all over the 49ers who were all over the Rams. You loved them as a possible outright winner last week at the Coliseum, and they were. And, and who'd have thunk it here that the, the Rams or, or the, uh, the 49ers are the last unbeaten team in the NFC. So – uh, a it's great job, strange. obviously, by them. Yeah. Oh, they they are, and and it's not it's not quarterback play. It is the run game and that defensive front seven. It, it, this is the team that Kyle Shanahan has been promising the world for a long time, and we're getting to see what he thinks of if he can build a football team his way. This is what it looks like. That's uh, just wait well, until Jimmy Garoppolo. Like just wait and, until and, he actually shows up. And to your point about the defense, Jared Goff looked horrific, less than 100 yards passing. They couldn't do anything with him last week. And and the Rams now are dealing people like baseball cards. They they trade Marcus Peters midweek to Cleveland to someone's Browns. They they trade for Jalen Ramsey of the of the Jaguars here in the state where I am. He's been very disgruntled and they gave up two number one picks to get him. So the Rams are clearly trying to better themselves to get better, but the 49ers who, who had that at the beginning of the year? This is why we love the <laughs> NFL, where you, you watch Cam Newton go out in Carolina, and I just saw them firsthand, guys, and Kyle Allen has led them to four wins in a row. Just Everybody was talking about lost season for Carolina in Charlotte, and, and they're a playoff contender right now with Kyle Allen at quarterback. How about that? Oh, after, after week two, we talked about whether or not Ron Rivera was going to be the first coach fired. Yep. <laughs> and, and we were way, way wrong on that. 
you, and you I keep up. bringing this up on the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Four weeks ago, we were saying Drew Brees is out for six weeks. Are the Saints going to be zero and six or one and five? They're now four and zero without him. Yeah, that is a phenomenal job by Sean Payton, by Dennis Allen, the defensive coordinator, by those players because they look the part right now of of arguably the best team in football to lose. You're you're telling me that if New England lost Brady for four straight games or, uh, you know, pick another one, Aaron Rodgers is out for four straight games with the Packers, that they're going to get four wins, including road wins, which, uh, you know, the Saints go to Seattle and win. They go to Jacksonville and win. Give them credit. Give them credit for what they're doing. We're recording this in a different part of where it's going to play in the podcast, but that will be talked about um, in our NFL coverage. I assure you, I, love it. I assure you that that is going to be discussed. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. He is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Get him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we can't thank you enough for coming on every week and doing this with us, buddy. I, I always love being on. As I kept joking with you, I got to come on if I if I got three for three right last week. We now have a standard to live up to. Two weeks in a row. We have given you five underdogs on Three Dog Thursday. So the fans can go find the Three Dog Thursday podcast, wherever you get those podcasts. And uh, what, Chris Giannini, you are with me this week. Uh, you guys are rolling along. You've been, you've been with me, giving me good underdog selections. I look forward to more of it on this week's show on Three Dog Thursday, guys. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right, we will talk to you soon. See you, boys. All right, we appreciate TJ for hopping in. Of course, like we said, go check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Go hit subscribe for him. Leave him a nice review. Tell him that we sent you. And you can always find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. You can find their show at Three Dog Thursday as well. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our social media, all of our videos, all of our podcasts, our picks, previews, etc., the football pick'em contest. Make sure you go enter that. Of course, uh, you can win some really cool prizes from our presenting sponsor, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six awesome sports books. You can find out more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. That is going to wrap it up. You got anything else you need to throw in? No, sir. All right. We hope you guys can win this week. Go, uh, go stack some bills for us. We will see you all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.